Hey, Booktube. It's uh, Sunday evening, and uh, I just put the finishing cap on video that's going up uh, tomorrow. Um, probably be a week ago by the time you see this, but... Uh, yeah, I hadn't hadn't had a lot to talk about in it. It's kind of probably <laughs> probably one of my shortest videos, uh, but uh, I wanted to get I had wanted to get something out, so I just went ahead, instead of stretching the vlog on for another week, I just uh, I put a cap on it, and uh, that's uh, processing right now. I just put all the pieces together, and I'm um, starting the starting the new one. Uh, my wife is at rehearsal right now so I got the evening to myself at least for another couple of hours and uh, yeah I'm making some dinner and uh, got some water boiling to make some spaghetti and because uh, I've been craving that for about a week and then I'm gonna sit down and uh, maybe read a little bit um, but then again I might pop in that uh, Avengers <laughs> DVD set I showed but um, I want to read, so we'll see. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, but I got uh, a few things uh, over here to read. Of course, I've got my Kindle. Uh, I brought uh, out uh, Phantom Pains, which is the second book in the Arcadia Project. I showed the third book in my haul video. Um, I have The Ritual over here by Adam Neville. I, that, I checked that out from the library. I kind of want to read the book before I watch the Netflix movie. Um, I don't know if I'll get to that or not. Um, down here, I've got Terminal Alliance I'd kind of like to start. Uh, Manhattan Beach that I started. Frankenstein and Baghdad that... Uh, that I've been wanting to get to. My tablet is sitting there that I use for, uh, I use that for Hoopla uh, books. And I checked out a book um, about uh, about sl sleeping better because I, 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 have, I, I don't sleep great. So I checked out a book about sleeping better. And then I've got that Lost Book of the Grail here. I've got the Tangled Lands arc that I got sent and I would really like to get to. Um, yeah, and just some other various things. I always have a lot. And there's, there's Gracie. Say hi, Gracie. You're not even looking at the camera. Okay. But yeah, so I've got plenty of options to read if I if I decide I want to read. Like I s said in the last video, I started Twelve Kings of Sh Twelve Kings and Sherakai this morning too, and I'm kind of interested to get back to that. So yeah, that's um, that's gonna be my night tonight. I've got actually the next tonight and then the next three nights uh, to myself because because uh, Jen has rehearsal, so. Um, she's in a, she's in a production of uh, a play called Leading Ladies by Ken Ludwig, um, that goes up in late April, early May. So um, so she's rehearsing that, and I got some nice to myself. And then uh, for Easter weekend, we'll be going to uh, our friends in Ohio. So. Um, yeah, the, uh, friends of ours, uh, live on the west side of Ohio, no, sorry, the, the east side of Ohio, near Pennsylvania. Um, he, my buddy got, uh, forced by GM to the Youngstown plant, um, several years ago, like, I don't know, like six years ago or so, maybe more, but, uh, we go down there, we try to make it down there every, a few times every year to see them, so... Uh, we're going, they were actually up here a couple weekends ago. Um, actually, last weekend as I'm filming this. Um, and I, when I talked, the, the weekend I talked about being uh, so down with the migraine, um, they were here that Friday night and saw how miserable I was. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're going, we're going there. Um, I'll probably vlog a little bit while I'm there too. So you'll see uh, a diff some different uh, backgrounds than uh than what you've been getting and yeah so uh my water's almost boiling so i'm gonna end this portion and uh have some dinner and maybe do some reading
Hey guys, uh, just on my way from my building to my car down here in Detroit. Uh, included with some shots of just outside my building and kind of the view I have on my walk to my car. Um, got kind of a bad headache today. We got some rain coming tomorrow and uh, I always feel that in my head. So that's uh, that's something going on with me today. Um, but my wife's picking up Panera on her way home from a dentist appointment for dinner and then uh, hopefully I uh, can have some soup and maybe feel a bit better and get some reading in tonight. I'm really enjoying uh, 12 Kings and Sherakai so far. I'm about 54 pages in and uh, I really, really enjoy it so far. Um, so I think that's going to be probably my primary read right now. And I want to, I really want to try and get to uh, the Tangled Lands uh, by Paolo Bacciolupi and uh, Tobias Buckle too, because uh, I want to get, I want to get a review done of that since that was uh, something uh, somebody was kind enough to send me. I got something I want to show you guys here real quick. Coming up here, this is something really cool we have downtown here. Uh, you guys know what a big fan I am of the book Ready Player One. And down here in Detroit, we have an arcade bar called Ready Player One, and they named the bar after the novel, which I think is really cool. But yeah, I'm almost to my car now, so uh, I'll end this little uh, segment of it, and uh, maybe I'll check in later with uh, anything I might have been able to get to. Hey guys, so I got home today, and uh, I had some book mail when I got home, so I want to show it to you. Um, I've been home for a little while. Now I laid down to try to uh, try and get rid of my headache, because it just felt like one of those, it was like right here, and just felt like one of those that I just needed to close my eyes for a little while, so I took a little nap, and uh, I feel a lot better. Just had some dinner, and um, now I'm going to share my book mail with you. Um... This is a book that the publicist reached out to me on to see if I would like a copy, and the description uh, sounded good. So I, uh, I said, yeah, go ahead and send me a copy. And uh, the book is called Murder in Little Shendon, and it is by A.H. Richardson. I know it is hard to see that on the cover. Um, the first thing I'll say before, uh, before I read the description is this was described to me as a cozy mystery. And I do not get cozy mystery from this cover. I get gruesome, gruesome murder mystery uh, from this cover. Um, like serial killer, almost horror-ish from this cover. Um, so if cozy mystery was the intent, um, as cool as the cover is, I think maybe the cover artist uh, let the author down a little bit if it was intended to evoke a cozy mystery. Um, the cover is cool. Uh, I'm not knocking the art, just in relation to if it's supposed to be a cozy mystery. Um, but let's read the back. It says, uh, Murder in Little Shendon. Nobody in Little Shendon particularly liked Mr. Finch. Therefore, when he is murdered in a rather gruesome manner, well, gruesome, uh, the suspect list grows quite long and includes everyone from his housekeeper to Lady Armstrong and her household staff, the shy librarian, a feisty major, the charming postmistress, owners of the town pub, even the vicar and the pair of American tourists. To aid the investigation, Inspector Stanley Burgess calls on his old friend, Sir Victor Hazlitt, and a new friend, the noted Shakespearean actor Beresford, Beresford Brand Brandon. The three sift methodically through the alibis and life stories of the suspects until they uncover. Then that's where it ends. Um, so yeah, it sounds, other than the gruesome manner of, uh, of the murder, um, and it sounds like, uh, like it's going to be more on the cozy side of mystery. So yeah, like I said, as cool as the cover is, it, I, I do not get a, a, cozy, mis a cozy vibe. Uh, from it um but anyway um 
I'm hope hopefully I will get to this in the next couple of months. I did tell the publicist that I was a bit behind on review copies and it might be a couple of months before I got to it. So um, what really cool is uh, it is signed to me, to Sean, all the best, A.H. Richardson, because uh, the way this publicist works, I guess, uh, I think they work with a lot of indie uh, authors and the the author, they let the author know where to send the books and the author actually is the one who sends the books. So this was nice, uh, got uh, nice personalized uh, copy. So, so thank you for that. And, um, it's, uh, I might end up actually end up with two copies of this. I don't know. Um, they, the publicist read, it was a few weeks ago when, if, when she first reached out to me and, uh, then last week she asked if I had received the book and I hadn't received the book yet. So she sent me another email and said, okay, uh, we're sending another copy. So there, I might have another copy lost in the mail somewhere, that might make its way to me at some point. Um, who knows? So anyway, that's my book mail for today. It sound it it sounds kind of cool. Um, and uh, I'll let you guys know more when I am able to dig into it. Hey guys, it's uh, Tuesday night, the day, no, it's Monday night, not Tuesday, the day before you're probably seeing this on Tuesday. Um, getting this finished up and uh, up a little bit later than I intended on, but uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, we were out of town for the weekend, so I didn't really feel like messing with anything when we got back last night. Um, what I've been reading, uh, I have been working on 12 Kings and Sherikai. Uh, I'm about 100 pages further than the last time I said something in, in this video. Uh, so I'm around one page 150, somewhere around there. Still really enjoying that. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm also been working on Beneath by Christy Demeester. Uh, this is a book that I got from word hoard for review and uh, I haven't gotten to it yet so I've been trying to do about five chapters in this a day to uh, try and get it finished up this week so that I can uh, I can do the review of it um, it's not the book that uh, I've been being pulled to 12 Kings and Sherikai is one of the books I've been being pulled to but I'm a little bit behind on review copies on reading review copies right now so I want to try and try and get into them and get them get them read oh i'm enjoying it um i am 162 pages into it um and uh, i'll talk more about it when i when i do the review of it um the other thing i've been slowly working on and will get faster soon um because the chapters are real short, so once I once I really get into it, it's not going to take me long to get through this. But I've been uh, working on the Ritual by Adam Neville. Um, this is the book that the Netflix horror movie is based on about uh, some friends in uh, in so, who get lost in some woods in Sweden and uh, come across. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they come across, but it ain't good because <laughs> I I'm only on like chapter eight <laughs> or something like that. But so I, I've been working on that, and I also this weekend I started um, Cold Cuts by Robert Payne Cabine, and I'll put the image up somewhere, um, the the cover image. But that is the book that won the Stoker for uh, debut novel this year uh, at, at the recent Stoker Awards. Um, and I want to, I read, sorry, something stuck in my teeth there. Um, I want, what I, I still, even though the winner has been announced, which was Cold Kills, um, not Cold Kills, Cold Cuts. Why did I write Cold Kills on this spreadsheet? fixing that right now 
is Cold Cuts by Robert Payne Cabine. Um, but I still, I still do want to read all of the books that were nominated for the Stoker for, for debut novel. And I've kind of, kind of been, uh, thinking about, and I've actually started to collect some of the books for it, reading, uh, all of the books that were nominated or not nominated, all the ones that were nominated this year. I definitely want to read all of those and I've acquired all of those. Um, but I want to read the winners of the Bram Stoker debut novel award. Um, and that's been going on since 1987. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to read the one, right? Like to read the best novel Stokers too. And I'll eventually we'll probably work on that. And I'll probably work on that a little bit while I work on the debut novels, but I want to focus on the debut novels first. But, uh, yeah, so I've acquired a few a few of them on Kindle. There's only one of them that I may not be able to get. It's out of print and I can't find it. But um, anyway, that is what I have been reading since I last uh, put a portion of the vlog in and talked about reading. Um, I have a, I acquired a book. Um, it's a pl it's a play called The Thirty Nine Steps, and it's. Uh, Looks like uh, Patrick Barlow wrote the play based off of John Buchan's book, uh, which all of it is, and the this is um, off of also off of the Alfred Hitchcock movie. So, um, one of the theater group, one of the main theater group uh, that I I do stuff with lately, where I where I assist and directed. Uh, I love you, perfect now changed. Just recently, they are doing this play next season, and I want to read it to see if it's something I feel like I could direct, or if it's something I want to be in rather than direct. But I want to read it because they're starting to accept director applications, so I need to know if it's something I want to direct or not. Um, also went to the library today. Uh, returned a bunch of books, and uh, some of them which were overdue from me being out of town. They were. Uh, and I couldn't re I, they wouldn't let me renew them because uh, people had holds on them, so they ended up being late. But um, and of course I can't walk out of the library empty-handed. I still have the ritual out. That's a library book. Um, but I also picked up the Fisherman by John Langan. Um, that was last year's Bram Stoker Best Novel winner. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I'll just read it real quick. Uh, in upstate New York, in the woods around Woodstock, Dutchman's Creek flows out of the Ashokan Reservoir. Steep banked, fast moving, and offers the promise of fine fishing and, and of something more. A possibility too fantastic to be true. When Abe and Dan, two widowers who have found solace in each other's company and a shared passion for fishing, hear rumors of the creek and what might be found there, the remedy to both of their losses, they, they dismiss it as just another fish story. Soon, though, the men find themselves drawn into a tale as deep and old as the reservoir. It's a tale of dark packs, of long-buried secrets, <clears throat> excuse me, and of a mysterious figure known as Der Fisher, the fisherman. It will bring Abe and Dan face-to-face -face with all that they have lost and with the price that they must pay to regain it. That sounds pretty good, and I've, I've heard good things about this. So I, uh, I was happy to find it at the library. Um... I got a graphic novel called Red Winter by Anne Fermack. Um, the cover art kind of drew me to it, and uh, I never heard of it. Um, it was in the new graphic novel section, and I'll just read it real quick. Uh, passion and politics unfold against the darkness of winter in 1970s Sweden. In an isolated northern town, Siv, a married mother of three, falls in love with a young communist, Ulrich. Though their affair takes place in the shadowy winter, Siv's children witness her affair without comprehending its reality. Anneli Fermark's delicate hues of blue and orange heighten the sublime qualities of the cinematic subarctic landscape and provide the nuanced backdrop in which Siv and Ulrich drift through the season, musing on their love, boasting of their ideals, dreaming of a new beginning, all the while oblivious to their actions and the inevitable consequences. And that uh, just sounded intriguing, as a, especially as a graphic novel. So, um... I'll be reading that within the next couple of weeks. So it's only a two-week loan. Um, I also got Haven 
by Tom Deddy. And I don't even know what it's, I'm going to read. I'm going to be reading this for the first time myself. I don't even know what this is about, but this was last year's debut novel, Stoker winner. Uh, let's see. In 1961, the small town of Haven thought they'd gotten rid of their monster. After a series of child killing, killings, Paul Graymore was caught carrying a wounded girl. His face disfigured from a childhood accident seemed to confirm he was the monster the community hoped to banish. With Paul in prison, the killing stopped. For 17 years, Haven was peaceful again, but Paul served his time and has now returned to Haven, the town where he grew up, and the scene of his alleged crimes. Paul insists he didn't commit those crimes, and several townspeople believe him, including the local priest, a young boy named Denny, and his best friend Billy. Trouble is, now that Paul is back home, the bizarre killings have started again, and the patterns match the death from, deaths from Haven's past. If Paul isn't the killer, who is? Or what is? An unlikely band of adventurers attempt to un attempts to uncover the truth, delving into long-hidden tunnels that might actually be inhabited by a strange predatory creature. Haven is a compelling horror epic in the spirit of It or Summer of Night, and a stunning debut novel from a gifted author who knows that the darkest horrors lurk inside human beings, even when there is a monster on the loose. Yeah, I uh, hadn't heard of this at all until I was looking to see uh, who the previous debut novel winners were. So it looks pretty, pretty uh, let's see, 498 pages. So I might have to renew this one a couple times if I, if I want to hope to get to it. Um, and I also, this one surprised me as a Stoker debut novel winner. Um, it's The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold because Alice Siebold is not known as a horror author like at all. But I know this book does deal with a child who has died and it's her spirit narrating the story um, about <clears throat> life going on uh, after her passing, the struggles her parents have, and and I think... If I'm remembering rightly, um, I think though at least though I think the, I think I'm thinking of the right move the right movie previews. I think in the movie previews, um, she ends up trying to help her father find her killer. I think her killer is still out. No, her killer still hasn't been apprehended. Um, but yeah, I know it all takes place uh, from the perspective of the the ghost of uh, or the spirit of of the murdered daughter. So uh, yeah, the, because it's been a pretty popular book, the library easily had it. They had a couple of copies of it, so I went ahead and grabbed it. And it's probably if I'm looking through the list, and, I, and I've looked through some of the, and I've looked through the books on, on the debut novel list. This is easily the um, the one that does not stand out as a horror novel. So uh, I'll be interested to read that and see uh, how it ended up winning the uh, the Stoker Award. So that's uh, that'll be kind of cool. Um, anyway. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. Um, I may, I'm probably going to try to start doing a few more, at least get a little bit more uh, content out there. I'm going to start probably start trying to do some review videos uh, as I finish up some books, especially for the ones that I requested for review or, or publicists have sent me. Um, so, so expect some review videos uh, coming out and uh Hopefully I'll get better at them, and I, they may be something I do a little bit more even for books I just read on my own. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you. Uh, if this is your first time here, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and you stick around. And with that, I will see you all in my next video.